Through our Vitality Shared Value business model, we've created a very different insurance model that incentivizes human behavior and makes people healthier. I want to tell you our story. Go to the next slide, please. Um, we started out a health insurer in the early 90s in South Africa. It was a fascinating time. It's the time when Nelson Mandela was freed. Uh, the country moved from apartheid into democracy. And starting a health insurer was a very, very difficult challenge. It's a country with massive complexity about disease burden, as you will know, HIV AIDS, uh, tremendous levels of disease burden. At the same time, too few doctors. And from a leg legislative perspective, a committed uh, obsession of government, and rightly so, given the past of, of South Africa, to have absolutely no discrimination whatsoever. The combination of that, the manifestation of that from a health insurance perspective, was great complexity. How do you start a health insurer if you can't price the risk, you can't control the supply side or the demand side? And I think our simple breakthrough, which turned out to be, uh, in a sense, a kind of entrepreneurial hunch, was a simple idea of making people healthier. The deep conviction that if we could make people healthier, we could bring the price of healthcare down. There was no understanding uh, in those days of incentives and all of the complexity of it. But our simple idea of building behavioral change into the health insurance model uh, really got us going. To the next slide. The manifestation uh, was the concept of vitality, a very simple, I think, intuitive idea of incentivizing people to be healthier, giving them incentives to do the right kind of things, prevention, physical activity, eating well, uh, uh, managing their weight in the right way. And the simple idea of earning vitality points as you did these things, getting a status and getting all kinds of rewards. So if you're a blue status to a gold status, you were given all kinds of incentives uh, and more, and you paid less for your health insurance. It was remarkably successful. And as you can see on the right-hand side of the chart, the architecture of the business model was really about attaching vitality, this kind of behavioral chassis to health and life insurance. And that's essentially how we got going. The traction we got was quite remarkable uh, from this. It really changed the nature of it. it. was a very transactional business into one that engaged people in a very different way and made them healthier. And our whole concept and our purpose was based on a very simple idea, make people healthier. And that authentic purpose has followed our organization throughout our existence. To the next slide. Um, what happened to us is we, we globalized quite quickly because to an extent, three powerful trends uh, started to emerge. The power of technology, obviously, from an enabling perspective, the power of corporate purpose, and that's accelerating now, the concept of making people healthier. But the fundamental issue of the nature of risk, when I trained as an actuary, uh, risk was very much pre-existing. You price people at a point in time. But we started to learn uh, about the power of behavior, the power of behavioral economics, that people don't make rational choices. And I think the fundamental issue, as you can see on the chart, that just a few behaviors drive the risk of death. So we call it this 4460, four simple behaviors, poor phys physical activity, uh, poor nutrition, smoking, uh, drinking alcohol lead to four conditions that drive 60% of mortality. So just four, four behaviors really make the difference. And the fundamental question we started to ask and started to learn about was why do people make these decisions? Uh, why do they make irrational decisions about their health where the link to mortality is so obvious and so clear? And the answer became clear with behavioral economics. People are overly optimistic and they discount the future at what we call hyperbolic discounting. Uh, to an extent, we know that healthcare is overconsumed. It's free at the point of care typically, and you feel the benefit of it. But prevention and wellness is the opposite. It's underconsumed. The problem is you have to avoid things you want to do. The price is now you've got to avoid that fatty food. Or you have to go for a run now. So there's a price to be paid, but the benefits are 40 years away. And so people really don't do that. And that is the opportunity of our business model, the opportunity of the insurance industry, because we are completely aligned to our customers. If they are healthier, we are more profitable. And so we have the ability to use our profitability to incentivize them to be healthier. And so what happened in our model is we realized we kind of developed this almost perfect shared value model structure. We incentivize behavior change. People change their behavior because of the incentives. They don't worry about the future. They're seeing the benefits right now. We are more profitable and we can fund the incentives. Good for us, good for our customers and good for society. No downside whatsoever. And so this model started to kind of flow downhill globally. All insurers started to be inter interested about the idea of behavioral science, about making people healthier to the next chart. Um, the, the, the key issue uh, for us was about the mathematics of how to get this to work at scale. And to an extent, the idea of shared values, changing behavior, incentivizing behavior change, creating economic value through that and sharing it. So the real issue is how you share that value per member, as you can see on that equation. And it breaks down very nicely into kind of incentives per member, essentially the incentive structure multiplied by the change in behavior for those given incentives, the programs you offer, 
multiplied by how we change mortality for the behavior change. That's the data. That's the real heart of the model. And then finally, how we take that change in mortality or, or sickness level and price it into value, into the products. And so what we developed out of this vitality structure is a very, very sophisticated stack of product, of data, of programs, of incentives, and some really powerful structures that we've really globalized uh, in, in many different markets. From a data perspective, we now have over 50 million life years of data correlating behavior change to low levels of sickness and mortality. We have a whole range of, of, of different programs around weight management, physical activity, nutrition, uh, and more. And we work with many companies around the world on incentives, you know, gyms and other structures and banks and all kinds of things to make sure people have real and tangible incentives to make their behavior change. To the next slide. Um, there are many things that I think we've done. One of the things that I, I gives a great example of how some of the programs work in the vitality structure is work we've done with Apple around the world. The idea that we call Vitality Act Rewards with Apple Watch. We kind of gamify this idea of physical activity that every week you should be physically active. And if you meet your goals by doing your 10,000 steps for a number of days, you get a simple reward. We worked with Starbucks as well in many markets. You get a, a free coffee. It's pretty cool through the app. It's easy to use. But then we broke this idea of using Apple Watch and the power of this is simple. You basically get the Apple Watch almost for free and you pay for it monthly. But the monthly installments that you pay is a function of how physically active you are. So if you're physically active and managing your physical activity, the monthly installment goes down to zero. You don't pay at all. So to an extent, the watch, the, the benefit works on, on loss aversion. You have it, you, you have it to lose. If you're not physically active, you end up paying for it. And the, the, the behavior change has been quite remarkable. And so to the next slide, over years, over decades, you've developed a, a considerable data set. There's a lot of data I could show you and illustrate to you, but just a few points that I, I thought are worthwhile. Firstly, on the left-hand side of the chart, a study we did with Apple, with Rand, that actually showed that this loss-framed gamification of physical activity actually got people to increase their levels of physical activity by 34%. You can also see in the middle of the chart the incredible correlations to people engaging in the program. People engaged, they lower their, their healthcare costs by 17%. We see that from a mortality perspective, people that are heavily engaged can reduce chance of death by 50%. And then the data allows us to actually cut the data in any way, you know, by, by gender, by age, by, by disease type, by risk factor, to actually understand the correlations between incentives, uh, engagement, behavior change, and the change in mortality um, and, and sickness levels, and really forms the, the basis uh, of the insurance model that we've created. To the next slide, um, what's interesting as well is you know, the model was developed around the idea of non-communicable disease, the simple idea that there are a few behaviors that will lead to a real change around cancer, diabetes, heart and lung disease. But the amazing thing, we've seen the power of what's happened during the COVID pandemic. Our data is absolutely unequivocal, as you can see on the left-hand side of the chart. The chances of death are, uh, from COVID are so influenced by levels of, for example, physical activity. It's a complicated chart, but I hope you can see that as people are more physically active, the chance of death comes down dramatically from COVID infection. And if you're 60 years old and you have a, a certain risk factor, if you're physically active, you can retard uh, th those chances of death to someone age 40. The data, I think, is pretty clear. And then you can see on the right-hand side of the chart, uh, when people are engaged in the program, chances of, of mortality from COVID are dramatically lower, 80%, 70% lower, um, depending on the different, different risk factors. So the effect of the model in both non-communicable diseases and infectious diseases is remarkable. So if we can just get people to change a few behaviors, the effect on their lives is, is, is absolutely huge. And from our perspective, our ability to build a financial services world that really incentivizes behavior change, there's no downside, we're completely aligned. To the next slide, I wanted to make the point that we've globalized the model. Uh, today, the Vitality Shared Value Model is the largest platform globally. We're in 27 markets, as you can see. We work with 14 insurers around the world, some of the biggest insurers in the world, from Ping On to AIA to John Hancock to Generali to Sumitomo Life and many more. Uh, our partners cover 35% of the covered population. And so we really have the ability to really change physical activity by working together with our partners um, in many markets. To the next slide. Um, what we're doing now is kind of learning that this issue of behavior change and incentivizing behavior change applies to other important areas of financial services. The same thing happens in the way people drive. There are a few behaviors, five behaviors that lead to 60% of the accident risk. In the case of banking, four simple behaviors lead to 80% of the credit defaults, leading people to financial difficulty. And it's exactly the same thing. If people, uh, if people behave differently, uh, we are more profitable as a bank or as an auto insurer. And therefore, we have the ability to share that profit by changing the incentive structures and changing the way people people behave. Um, to the to the next slide, um, we built exactly the same kind of stack, the vitality framework with institutional either auto insurance or bank 
on the back of that. And the data, as you can see from the chart, is absolutely compelling. Again, the correlations are strong. Uh, people who engage in the program have accidents 80% less of the time. People who manage their money well through our structure um, default 99% less. They don't default, they typically manage their money well. So the opportunity to really change behavior through the right kind of incentives, I think is remarkably compelling. To the next slide. To make the point in the end of with, uh, we are globalizing our model. Uh, it really is, I think, a very simple, easy, intuitive product to use. You can see it on the face of, of a digital journey that's simple in many different countries, many different languages. I think we have the opportunity to really transform financial services and in the process make millions or tens of millions of people healthier. So we are early in our journey. It's very exciting. And I think kind of the, the nexus or, or bringing together financial services with behavior change has considerable power. Uh, I hope my, my presentation is clear and I hope you see the power of the model that we are, we are rolling out. Thank you for listening.